The first part was about what happens. Now it's time to dive a bit deeper. Hi. PPQ settings and their impact are always good for a discussion which often never wants to stop. A legitimate question is, but why does this not happen in door XYZ? Other doors using PPQ for just collecting MIDI data, zoom level and clip start end in the timeline. This is not much work. They do not have a fixed amount of mixer tracks preloaded either. FL Studio does much more work than just collecting some MIDI data. Why went Goal this way instead of restricting it like all the others did? I am not Goal, so I cannot answer this exactly. But I know he always tried to do things differently to improve on many issues the old dinosaur doors were fighting with. For example, FL Studio was long long time well known for its very precise timing. FL Studio was one of the first doors which had real-time modulators. Perhaps a reason for doing things this way around. Anyway, we've got what we've got. And many users claim, higher PPQ values raise the CPU usage quite a lot, but deeper zooming and more edit precision would be needed, which is only available with higher PPQ settings. There are certain statements like these, claiming that higher PPQ would be essential for precise timing. Other doors offer a much higher PPQ, very important outside of EDM, zooming, quantizing, higher resolution equals more authentic human feel, microediting. Is there really a need of having this precision? Or do we get fooled sometimes by marketing? Does it really improve my work? Or am I casting pearls before swine? Let's make a little test. I doubled here a snare with a very sharp attack. Starting with being very close timing-wise, I put one of them more and more in front. Close your eyes and just listen. As soon as you can clearly identify that there are two hits instead of one. Pause the video and count after how many times you were able to tell the difference. For me, at bar 4 I can imagine there could be two hits. And not before bar 5 I can clearly hear two hits. So let's take a closer look how far they were apart. We take here the one at bar 4. I had the feeling it would be two without clearly hearing it. Let's count the single steps. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8. We are at the resolution of 768 ppq. As we have seen, this is the highest resolution we can use when moving notes. 8 steps at 768 ppq equals 4 steps at 384 ppq. This equals 2 steps at 192. This equals 1 step at 96. Let's take another example. I concentrate always on drums for these examples, as they are the rhythm guide of nearly all music. If you cannot hear timing variation on drums, you cannot hear them on other material either. Here's a little drum loop. Nothing fancy, just for demonstration. Just to be sure, let's play it again. It was the same, wasn't it? 
I cannot speak of you, but for me, I didn't hear any differences. But it wasn't the same. I cheated a little bit and replaced the audio with a loop I rendered from the second loop. Let's zoom in a bit. This snare is early. This close head is late. This is late. The open head is early. This is early. This is late. Kick is late. Head is early. Early. Late. Snare is late. Open head is early. And the rest I left untouched. Let's go back to the first loop. Nothing is shifted. All hard quantized. And this is the audio you heard the second time. Let's face flip the second clip and do a null test. This is a timing difference between the loops. Did you recognize it before? I didn't. But you have to decide yourself. Let's look at the PPQ. 192. Well, that means at these points where for example one head was early and the second one was late, we had a timing difference of 5.2 milliseconds and I wasn't able to tell it. It is fact that most people cannot even tell delays of 10 milliseconds in such a context. Very trained people are able to identify timing differences of 5 milliseconds. But that's a rare minority. Do blind tests for yourself. Make 10 variations of a loop with different timings. Some straight quantized, some off in different ways. Take a sheet of paper and a pencil. Sit down in front of the speakers, but without looking at the monitor, and ask a friend or family member to place the loops randomly after each other in the playlist and to hit play. While just listening, note on the paper which ones you think are straight and which ones are off. Compare this afterwards with the playlist. Everything below a correctness of 75% is pure guesswork. Do I personally need a precision of 0.65 milliseconds or even higher when it comes to quantization and better human feel like claimed? If I can't tell the difference of 5.2 milliseconds, I certainly cannot tell the difference of even smaller steps. So for me, the answer is clearly no. I never felt the need of PPQ settings higher than 192. But that's me. You have to decide for yourself. And this is just one side of the medal. There's a second issue always brought up in this discussion. Phase aligning. Our hearing is very precise, but in a different way. If the same or at least similar frequency content overlaps and one is shifted in time in very small amounts, we easily get phase problems. This is something our hearing is very sensible to. Editing, time-shifting material in very small increments harbor a high risk to cause phase problems. Let's go back to my snare example from the beginning and let me deactivate the envelope I first used to pronounce the transients. The in-phase snare suddenly starts to get more and more phase issues and flanging before we are able to identify them as two separate sounds, at which point the phase issues and flanging stops immediately. In this example, with the envelope turned off, I couldn't even tell before bar 6 that there are two separate hits. At bar 6, they are 10.4 milliseconds apart. The phasing and flanging here is a self-made problem, 
because of time shifting material in very small time amounts. But this can happen in other situations too, for example multi mic recording of a drum kit. Or even if you place a copy of the same audio clip in the playlist that they still overlap. Because the cycles of the waveform mostly doesn't sync to the project tempo, but the new clip starts quantized. The phase of the copy is off. In this example, the two waveforms cancel each other nearly out. Here is minus one, on the second clip nearly at plus one. This subtracts a big part of the energy and results in a volume of minus 8.5 decibel. If I now flip the face of the second clip, turning the face upside down, this plus one gets minus one, like on the upper clip. Our volume raises to minus 1.3 decibel. We raised the volume by 7.2 decibel just because of being better in face. The cycles now add to each other instead of subtracting from each other. Face flipping can be a way to eliminate those problems, but doesn't give us being completely in face, as you can see in the oscilloscope. The red line is the first clip and the yellow one the second. They are still a bit off. Many people like to face align waveforms by eye, at high zooming levels and high edit precision. This is one way which leads to good results, but is edit intense and forces you in FL Studio to raise the PPQ to the max. But it works. For not being forced to keep this high CPU load for the whole time, you can simply trim the clip afterwards that it starts on a line. After setting PPQ back to a lower value, the face still remains in sync. If you don't like this whole change of PPQ, zoom in and out, just use delay 3. Back to the start where the face is off. Insert a delay 3 on the second mixer track where I routed the other copy to. Time all the way down, stereo, feedback level down, filter off, dry down. Now it doesn't echo, but simply delays the 100% wet signal by the time amount of in this case 1 millisecond. Hit play and raise the time value until the two phases match perfectly. Work done. Without changing PPQ, without zooming, without changing anything back. No matter which way you decide to go. It's quite easy to get perfect results with ESA, without any CPU impact. If we prefer to go the visual way at high PPQ settings, of course FL Studio is a bit more cumbersome. But please understand that it wasn't made for such work. It was always specialized for different tasks which are mostly more cumbersome in other doors. There is no right or wrong. It's all a matter of taste and personal preference. For me, there are no issues with PPQ settings and CPU impact at all. But again, that's me. You decide for yourself. Thank you for watching. <laughs>